Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Thelda Williams. On this episode, we'll be discussing one of our most precious resources, water, and how we are working with other Arizona cities to protect our supplies. And we'll learn more about the future of Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. My first guest is Ward Tinney, the Executive Director of the Arizona Municipal Water Users Association. This organization helps Phoenix and nine other Arizona cities work together to manage and protect our water supplies. Warren, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. You're the new director. Yes. Tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and uh, how, why you wanted this job, I guess. <laughs> well, I, um, I have worked in water for over 24 years. Um, the last 22 years I've been in the Tucson area working at Metro Water District, and there I was the assistant general manager. But at, during that time, I had an opportunity to work in the water community, both in the Southern Arizona, as well as up here in the Phoenix um, region, working with folks on various issues um, over the, that time. Uh, I also served as the president of the Southern Arizona Water Users Association, and also had the opportunity to be elected to the board of the Central Arizona Project. And so when this position became open um, a few months ago, I thought it would be a great opportunity to work in the Phoenix area with the members of AMWA and to look at how um, collaboration can continue and um, move forward Arizona on such an important issue as as water. And I've always was impressed with how AMWA was a leader in collaboration by bringing the 10 largest Maricopa County cities together to uh, work on water issues so that they have one voice. Well, your timing is, is really interesting because water is the hottest topic in, in the nation practically, and especially in this area with uh, the river diminishing, the lake diminishing. Um, but we're safe for now? Yes. Arizona is, has done the best job in the West, if not in the nation, when it comes to water management. And part of that is because we did a great job in planning. We put in place the 1980 Groundwater Management Act, which is still the most proactive groundwater regulation in the nation. And I'm happy to say that that was a key uh, success in Arizona that AMWA, the Arizona Municipal Water Users Association, was very much actively involved and has always supported to keep maintain that. Also, uh, Arizona invested in its infrastructure, be it long ago with the Salt River Project, in recognizing, hey, we live in an arid state. Let's make certain that we manage our water well and squeeze every drop that we can. And then uh, we also worked on the Central Arizona project and in the Phoenix area, there's been a um, much effort in investing in the infrastructure necessary to move water throughout this community. Emma's long been a leader on cons conservation. Um, do you wanna talk a little bit about how you encourage cities to conserve, to recharge, and for neighborhoods to actually get involved and whether it's landscaping, reducing water usage is the bottom line, and how AMWA kind of leads the effort? Yeah, certainly. AMWA has been and continues to be a leader in how do we use our water more wisely? How are we can be the most efficient at using our water? And one way to do that has been by bringing the 10 cities together and have a consistent message, have a unified message when it comes to water conservation. AMWA has done a great job in putting um, forward publications um, that are then utilized in the whole region, as well as having a message about using water wisely. And what is often forgotten, or people don't realize, is how much we've, um, by conserving and having that conservation ethic, Arizona statewide is using the same amount of water that we did back in 1957. So, really? yes. That's amazing. It is amazing, and it, and it is a testament about Arizona being 
um, and particularly the Phoenix area, being leaders on conservation. You know, it's always interesting because uh, people contact my office who have moved in state and they'll say, oh, you waste so much water, you don't have water, and they almost um, fever pitch, I mean, when they get, and trying to explain about, no, we do conserve water, we are very careful with our water. Um, so that message is extremely important getting out to people. Uh, how do they contact you? Do you, do you have a, well, a we blog have a, or email or what? We have our website. Um, amwua.org, amwa.org. Um, we also have a blog that goes out regularly talking about water issues, um, often focusing on how people can use their water more efficiently. And certainly there's always room for improvement. We're, we're certainly going to continue to promote the importance of water conservation. But as you said, we have done a good job, and that is a message that we need to continue to get out there, which is kind of sets us apart from some of our neighboring states in that we're not having to react um, based on the drought that is impacting the western United States. We've been steadily working forward on conservation as well as other areas of um, water management, which is so important um, because water is so critical to our economy. And because we have managed well our water, we have a very strong economy. I like to always say water is what fuels our economy. And that's why if we're investing and planning on our water resources, we're ensuring that Arizona will continue to have a long-term um, strong economy. I, I think that's a very important message. I know that our economic development team, one of the first questions they get is, does Phoenix really have water? You're in a desert. This, you're gonna, is it sustainable? You're going to have it in the future before anybody even considers even coming to town to visit or talk about relocation. So I congratulate you on a great job. I know we've had some challenges this year at the legislature. Yes. Yes, we have. And that's, again, another positive area that AMWA, I believe, has contributed in Arizona. By having a board of directors who are elected officials, they understand the importance of water and what that and what water means to their communities. And the board of AMWA in reviewing legislation this year recognized that Senate Bill 1400 and Senate Bill 1268 have the potential of weakening our overall groundwater management. And while it was dealing with an issue over, you know, 200 miles away in southeast Arizona, it still has a ripple effect. And it's really important that in Arizona that we work together and recognize that what happens, whether it be in the West Valley here, has an impact on the East Valley on issues dealing with water and certainly things that happen in rural Arizona has an impact on urban Arizona, if not in at least just the perception. And it's really important at this time that Arizona be able to continue to tout the strong groundwater management um, that we have done and our overall water management efforts because it's so important to our future. What do you see uh, as the next uh, major challenge or goals for AMWA in the coming year? Well, I think it will be important for AMWA to continue to provide a forum for the, the 10 cities to be able to talk about some of the issues coming on with uh, Colorado River and the possibility of a shortage being declared there. Obviously, each community will need to make their own decisions, but it, having that opportunity to sit around the table and share ideas and talk about what each other's doing will be very important. I think also um, it will be important for us to look at recovery of water that has been stored. While it may not be needed in, in, for quite some time, it's very important that we can say that Arizona has a fully um, comprehensive re uh, recovery plan. I think it's interesting the fact that we have um, the ability 
to store the water. Yes. We have the legislation, the authority, whatever, but we don't have it to take it out of the ground. I think that's... Yeah, that's been an area, yeah. th that's been an area in the water community that there's been a long message that we need to step up and, and come, have a little more comprehensive recovery planning. There's certainly been efforts on that and different um, ideas and different plans in place, but it needs to be a, a more comprehensive so that the municipalities have certainty on how the water that was stored by the Arizona Water Banking Authority will be recovered and can be utilized by the municipalities. Uh, uh, water is fascinating to me. Uh, it is so complex yes. um, <laughs> for something you know so basic. It, the players are always interesting. Um, I, I think it's remarkable that the cities work as closely as they do because many times we're competitors. Um, and Phoenix is sometimes seen as the giant who's trying to interfere with other cities, but I think we work pretty well as a partner, um, sharing resources as, uh, and supporting them. So I, I really believe that AMA is a very valued uh, entity and one that should continue for a long time. I know as we work through the Colorado so shortages um, that we are expecting in the future, it doesn't mean we're not going to have the water for the valley. Correct. Uh, it may mean um, that uh, it may become more expensive, yeah. um, but all of those things are still undecided and um, we're talking about helping CAP look at their structure. Uh, we work very close with SRP off of there. Um, do you have any thoughts on how it's all coming together or what you anticipate as either a problem or a big win for us in the future? Well, I think uh, Arizona has a strong history of collaborating on water issues. Water has never been a, a partisan issue. It's it's, um, as you mentioned, the 10 cities here in Maricopa County, the large cities have been working together for 47 years with the Arizona Municipal Water Users Association, which is a great track record and I believe will be even more critical in the future for us to continue to collaborate. The value is by working together um, and recognizing that water really doesn't have boundaries, jurisdictional boundaries, and that's why we need to work on water together, is that, the, that as we move forward, having that one voice here in the Valley of the Sun will be very important on water issues. And then we go forward in collaborating with the Arizona Department of Water Resources, Salt River Project, Central Arizona Project on key issues, as well as others that are in, invested in water. Well, well, I really appreciate you coming on the show today and talking about water and uh, welcome you to the Valley. Thank I know you. you moved here from Tucson and uh, you're doing a very good job. I appreciate it. I know you've had some challenges and we'll face them as they come in the future. So thank you for being here today. Well, thank you. Up next, we'll focus on development of the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. Please keep watching on the issues. What would you do if you saw a dog, a cat, or a horse that looked like this? Animal cruelty and neglect is a crime that needs to be reported. I'm Councilwoman Thelda Williams, here with my rescued pets, Henry and Cheyenne. And I'm Councilman Michael Novakowski asking for your help. If you ever suspect animal cruelty, call Crime Stop, the Arizona Humane Society, or the Sheriff's Office. Animal cruelty is a crime. And together, we can stop it. Welcome back to On the Issues. Though Sky Harbor is one of the nation's busiest airports, Phoenix also is a partner in a growing passenger air hub in the East Valley the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. To tell us more, I'm here with the airport's Chief Operating Officer, Brian O'Neill. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you, my pleasure to be here. You're almost brand new. I am seven months into the job. So, where'd you come from and why did you come? Well, um, I spent uh, 20 years at Manchester Boston Regional Airport, which is about 45 miles north of Boston, 
in New England. And um, oh, well, that I, explains why you came. That's right. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Enough <kidding>. said. Um, <laughs> When I started with the airport, uh, it was a small regional airport that handled less than a million passengers a year. And during my tenure, the airport grew to over 4.4 million passengers and, and became a, a large um, focus city for Southwest Airlines. It was very exciting. And, and after my two older children graduated from grad school, my wife, who's from Southern California, said, do we really need to stay in New England anymore? Um, the weather gets to you after a while. I saw this job uh, posted at Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport and I did a little research and it really reminded me of when I first started back at Manchester Boston Regional Airport. It, it was a, a small airport next to a major hub, um, had a lot of potential. There, um, I, think, you know, I think there's a lot of growth that can happen, not only with the commercial air service, but with the thousand acres of developable land that the, the airport also has. So, I applied for the position and uh, thankfully I got it and moved out here with my family at the end of last year and, and we've absolutely loved it. I, I think Phoenix Mesa Gateway is an incredible airport and it's got a lot of potential and uh, look forward to helping it grow. I love that little airport. Yeah, it's very convenient. <laughs> I've been on the board for uh, five years, I think, or maybe more. And its uh, growth is quite impressive. I mean, we only have the one airline. But how many cities does it serve? 38. That's a lot it, of cities. It is. We, we appreciate your leadership and Allegiant now uh, has 38 nonstop destinations. Last year they grew by over 4% and uh, during 2015 they added three new destinations. They're uh, launching a new city, Sonoma County, California at the beginning of May. So I, you know, I think their growth pattern is going to continue. Uh, they've been a, a wonderful valued airline partner and we look forward to helping them uh, grow in, in the East Valley in the future. I was surprised. My area that I represent is the Northwest area. And it starts at Metro Center and goes up to New River Road, which is past the outlets and past Anthem. How many people tell me that they go to Gateway because of the convenience? And it's just plain easy. Yeah, that, that's our slogan and it's, it, it's a true slogan. You know, we found a lot of people from the West Valley that uh, drive over to Gateway Airport because of the unique destinations that Allegiant serves. You could fly out of Sky, Sky Harbor, but you're gonna have to connect through one of the airline hubs. It, you know, the, the highway system here, the freeway system here in, in the greater Phoenix area is terrific. And getting to Gateway Airport from the, from the west side isn't that difficult. So we find we're drawing a lot of people from the West Valley coming over to, to use Allegiant over at, at uh, Gateway Airport. You know, one of the things that the board recently talked about, I think it was at the last meeting even, is you were talking about the acreage that's there and the development. Uh, talking about an industrial area, do you want to mention what, what you're up to out there? Sure. Um, as I mentioned, the airport has over a thousand acres of industrial, commercial, retail land that is available for future development. And I think that's one of our greatest assets. Um, Earlier in April, we had a, um, an industry forum called Envision Gateway. And what Envision Gateway did is it brought together airport developers, operators, and investors from around the world to come to Mesa, Arizona, to look at the robust economy, to learn more about the airport, and learn more about future development opportunities at, at Gateway. And I'll tell you, the response was phenomenal. They, they really were impressed. We, we took, thank you to SRP for, for allowing us to use their helicopter. We took them up and we gave them a helicopter tour of the region and uh, we had a, a full day of, of um, sessions where the ACA came in and talked about the strength of the Arizona economy. We had GPEC come in and talk about the strength of the greater Phoenix economy. We had a, uh, an economic development panel from the East Valley that talked about all the great things that were going on there. The, the airport authority and, and Jane Morris did a terrific job of kind of laying out what the opportunity is for the future at the airport. Uh, SRP came in and talked about that very topic you had earlier in the show about uh, the water and the difference between water management here in Arizona and the water management in other communities and other states. Um, and then we had uh, the Maricopa Association of Governments that came in and talked about rail and roads. And it really gave a great overview of the opportunity that's not just Gateway Airport, but it's the opportunity that's the growing East Valley and the growing greater Phoenix area. And, and I think we're already seeing uh, fruit, the fruits of our labors. We're gonna be issuing two 
um, requests for qualifications. One is going to be for a master developer. We've got 300 acres in the south end of the airport called the Gateway Aerospace Park. We're looking for a private developer to come in and, and take that over and, and um, use their connections in the industry to help develop that area. We've also got an area on the east side of the terminal, which runs along Ellsworth Road, which we're calling the Ellsworth Road Retail Area. That, that road is extremely busy, 36,000 cars a day, and we think there's an opportunity for the right developer to come in and do a retail and commercial project there that would, would allow the airport to reap the benefits of non-aeronautical revenue. So, yeah, it's, it's very exciting, and I, you know, I think we're going to be successful in helping develop those types of revenue streams uh, for the authority. I think it's, uh, many people d do not understand that um, an airport doesn't make its money off of airlines. Usually th that's cost neutral because uh, you want to keep them coming, you want to attract new ones. So you make your money off of leasing land, retail operations. Uh, so I think it's very exciting. When you're talking about retail, what kind of retail are you talking about? Anything? Well, I, I, again, there's a lot of uh, vehicular traffic on Ellsworth Road. And, you know, I'm envisioning maybe a, a higher end, um, a higher end strip mall type of environment where you've got some retail and you've got some commercial. Uh, it's just prime for a gas station and convenience store because everyone who's coming from Queen Creek and, and Santan trying to get onto the highway system, they're coming up through Ellsworth Road. And, and when they're coming back home at night, boy, they could stop off and do some shopping or pick up something they need for the house. So we think there's a real opportunity to, to have some development there. So if anybody happens to be watching and be interested, how can they get more information about going through this process? Yeah, that's a great question. Our business development director, Shay Yoakum, would be certainly willing to have them out to the airport for a tour and talk about some of the opportunities. If they go to the airport's website, which is phxmesagateway.org, they'd be able to find information on how to get in touch with Shay, and Shay will take good care of them. That's great. It's very exciting. It is very exciting. And I hear you recently went to a conference with Allegiant, and you're coming up with a new idea. I, I did. Um, uh, the airport director, the executive director and I went to the annual Allegiant conference. The Allegiant serves 113 airports and I believe 104 airports were there. There were 200 people in attendance and we got an opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one with Allegiant's senior management, talk about the Opportunity Gateway, talk about how we can strengthen our partnership and opportunities to do new things in the future. Earlier this year, we came up with a, a new program called the Allegiant Alliance. And the Allegiant Alliance is really an opportunity for Gateway Airport to reach out to the 38 Allegiant airports across the country and work with their marketing people, work with the CVBs in their communities to really strengthen the relationship between the East Valley and those destinations. We're going to be sharing information so that we can tell the story better here in these valley of why people need to go to Des Moines or Memphis or Fresno or, or Fargo. But we're also sharing a lot of information on why those people who live in those communities need to take Allegiant and come to the East Valley and come to the greater Phoenix area. So we're going to be using social media. We're going to be using the websites. We'll be probably doing some cooperative marketing. But I think it's a really exciting opportunity to cost effectively help promote our community, their community, and Allegiant service. Oh, I think it's a great idea, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No, we're looking forward to really uh, having that take off. So, anything else you're planning to do that's spatial outstanding and uh, you want the public to know? Well, you, you know, the airport is a, is, a, is a major economic engine for the region. Um, last year we had over 1.3 million passengers, and if you say that half of them are from out of state coming to visit the, the East Valley, that's almost 700,000 people that are flying into the greater Phoenix area. They're spending money on hotels and ground transportation and food and beverage and retail purchases and entertainment. And they're really, uh, they're, they're, they're spending a lot of money in the community. The, the airport contributes about $1.3 billion a year to the greater Phoenix economy. And that's in jobs and taxes and all of those uh, hospitality spendings that, that our passengers are doing. So, you know, we're looking to continue to work with our airline partner, Allegiant, to grow the number of nonstop destinations, to get more people 
coming in to visit the East Valley and come to vi coming to visit the greater Phoenix area. So there are some, some exciting initiatives we're doing. We, we've actually, we're in the terminal right now working on a project called I Pledge Allegiant Because. I Pledge uh, Allegiant? I Pledge Allegiant Because. Good, good and it's interesting um, because in, in, instead of us telling our story, we're looking for our passengers to organically tell our story. So we're getting families that are saying, I pledge allegiance because they get us to go visit family in Bellingham, or I pledge allegiance because uh, I get a really great low fare ticket on Allegiant, or I pledge allegiance because Gateway Airport is just so convenient. So we're really, this is kind of an outreach marketing program where we're having our passengers help tell our story. That's very clever. I, I would think it would have a great impact. Everyone who flies out of Gateway Airport has a unique story, and we're gonna try and capture that. That's, I, I love the idea, love the idea. I know that Phoenix um, is very proud to be a partner in this and uh, try to help wherever we can. Um, I assure you, we are not after your airline from <laughs> Sky Harbor. That's been a, a topic uh, yeah. several times, but it, um, I think that's part of the game. Yeah, you know, it is great that we have um, Phoenix as, a, as a, an important member of, of our family, of our authority. Um, the, the city of Phoenix brings a lot of experience and knowledge, I mean, not only from the, the way that you run Sky Harbor, which is, you know, is, as a, uh, is, a, is a tribute to how a large major metropolitan airport should be run, but through your efforts and, and the staff of, of, of Phoenix, the city, it's really been beneficial as we continue to evolve and, and continue to, to, to explore who we really are and what we are capable of becoming. So I, I, again, the, the relationship between the city of Phoenix and the airport is important because at some time, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport is gonna reach capacity mm -hmm. and we're the other three runways that are gonna be serving the valley. And I've heard Phoenix Sky Harbor individuals say in the past, you know, our capacity isn't constrained because we've got three additional runways located in the East Valley. And it's that type of partnership, that type of relationship that is probably unique. A lot of people would think that we're competitors, but we're not. We're, 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 we're on the same team. We're partners trying to do the best to, to create the most efficient uh, air transportation system for uh, the greater Phoenix area. And I, I'm I think the staff out there is just remarkable. Um, yeah, there's a great, great team out there. They're enthusiastic and they work together, um, ask for help when they need it, take care of business, and always looking towards the future and how it can grow and how it can provide better service to the community. So I want to thank you for coming and not uh, only considering our weather, but the importance of Gateway. Uh, I know that uh, you're going to be a great leader out there and uh, you have the experience, the knowledge and the enthusiasm uh, to see it grow. I'm sure you're going to quadruple that little airport too. So thank you for coming on the show and being part of this today. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. That's all the time we have for this month's On the Issues. If you have any questions or comments about this show, call my office 602-262-7444 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district one. See you next time on the issues.